live. All right. Hi, everybody. It's Lori from Cut and Paste Craft Studio. Welcome to our cat canvas painting today. Um, I will warn you ahead of time, we have had all kinds of issues with Facebook Live today. I'm guessing everybody in there, uh, brother wants to do Facebook Live. So if we have to, if you see us freeze, um, hopefully we'll figure it out pretty quickly and we'll start a new live. And then when it comes to the end, I will stitch them all together and put them up on YouTube as one video. So um, here's crossing our fingers that we can do this. I think most of you all have painted with me before. But if you have not, um, oh, we're almost right at three. We'll, maybe we'll give it another minute or two just to make sure we've got all our friends with us today. still waiting on people for a little okay. bit but I can still okay. angle us in um, so this is our final product for today but we'll wait for a few more people to gather because okay. it is just now three can you talk let me hear if you yes good. everybody if you're just joining us now um, that we're going to be painting our cat canvas today um, if you've signed up, you've got your cat canvas, you've got your set of colors, you've got your three brushes. If you haven't done this with us before um, and you haven't signed up, watch for a little bit. See if you like what we're doing and then um, you can go on our website, cutandpastecraftstudio.com and sign up there. Um, once we finish our Facebook Live of our paintings, we upload these to YouTube so you can keep watching them there. Um, I will warn you that we, this is our second Facebook Live of the day, and the earlier one got interrupted three or four times. So if we do get interrupted, hopefully we'll figure it out quickly, and we'll just start a new live. And you guys can just keep going on with us. When we get done, we'll stitch them all together and upload them to YouTube. So um, if you've not painted with us before, uh, you have three brushes. Uh, the, there's a wide one with a flat edge that's really good for doing wide open spaces. It's a medium sized one, can get into those smaller spaces. Both of these have flat edges, which are really good for doing straight lines. And then you've got a real pointy one that's good for getting up into little corners. If your brushes are, are new, make sure you fluff them up before because they have sort of, I think it's called a sizing that's on the brushes. Helps them um, transport better when they're shipping them to you, but you wanna fluff them out so you don't still have that on there. Um, we really only have, um, four colors today and then black and white so um, you will need a little black you'll need um, your marker at the end too so um, pull that out and you Melissa need I need a water bowl and paper towels <laughs> Melissa and I were so busy getting everything set up we completely forgot the paper towels and the water bowl you will need those um, you can also if it's helpful to you to have a blow dryer nearby if you want to dry something before you move on to another step you're welcome to do that um, I won't blow dry while y'all are listening to me. That's just a little too obnoxious. <laughs> Thank you. I was just typing a comment to let everyone know to get those things. And oh. noticed that you did not <laughs> did have, not have those them. Things. Okay. Um, the first thing we're going to do is paint our background color. Um, and again, these are the colors I'm using. You guys are always welcome to mix your colors a little bit. You could lighten up your yellow. You could do a red background instead of a yellow. Flip it with the, uh, with the cat. If you really wanted your cat to be red, you could make a second color of red where you added white to it to give it that second color and then use blue for your background. You guys are always welcome to mix these up. I can't see what you're doing. I'm not going to tell you to do it differently. Uh, but the first thing we are going to do is paint our background. So you'll want that biggest brush. Remember, we don't get our brushes wet to start with. We always start with a dry brush. And we're just going to take this super bright yellow and paint him on there. Oh, hold on there. Um, now you all will be painting flat on uh, the table. I paint on an easel so that you can see me better. Um, but uh, you'll see me, after a while, start turning my canvas around so I can reach things better. You do that too. If it, if it feels awkward, that's a sign that you need to move. Now see, I'm not getting too close to my cat. I'm going to just 
um, paint the wide open spaces. I'm gonna avoid the rug down here too. Okay. I apologize. Oh, now we're upside down. Oh, no, the canvases. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Um, oh, yep, yeah, okay, we should be okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, y'all. We have fought and fought and fought with Facebook Live. It's gotten harder and harder to use. I think it's because there's so many people using it. Um, we have ordered a web camera. I think I've told you this before, and it is literally on a slow boat from China. Um, last I heard, it was in L.A. waiting for customs. So hopefully we'll get through that, and then we'll have a web camera, and that will be so much easier to do things with. All right. Now I have, I don't know about you, but I have gotten most of my uh, yellow done, and I didn't paint right up to the edges. So now I'm going to go back, and I think for my edges, I'm going to switch down to my smaller brush. So remember, always put put whatever brush you're, you're using, the one that you got wet paint on, put it in your water. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> oh, come on. outside. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use a smaller brush to get nice, smooth edges here. We're back <laughs> once again i apologize y'all <laughs> we only have to get two two more of these and then we'll be okay two more just the cat and the sloth and we'll be fine so again i was painting my edges with my fine small brush you know when i traced that cat's ear he got a little wobbly there but that's okay now I'm going to start turning him. Using that flat edge to give me a flat straight line. Moving very slowly. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to brace my wrist on the edge. Now I know it's wet. You're going to get yellow paint on your wrist, but that's okay. And I'm going to go completely upside down and just finish off this edge here. Y'all, I hope when we freeze up that you all just keep painting and don't wait for me. All right. Now I've got my background painted. I have a feeling that you are going to want to dry this with your blow dryer now. Um, just because as we move on, again, you, we like to brace our hand on that canvas. Um, so you can, you can uh, run, get your blow dryer, dry it real quickly, run outside in the sunshine and shake it around. Now you can always go back afterwards too um, and touch up any spots if you want. I can see just a couple of little spaces. Sometimes my friends too um, like to paint the edges. And that's always something you could do at the end is paint the edges of it, depending on how you want to display it and what you like um, for your shapes. Now, for our cat, um, and, and you all let Melissa know if we're uh, getting slow, if, if I'm getting too far ahead of you, we're still live, right? Yes. Good. Um, for our cat, we use two different colors of blue here. And we kind of ombre them together. I mix them together. So what we're going to do is start with the lighter color blue. This is a color called Coastal Waters, and um, we're going to paint his tail first because I know, and this part of his face, because I know those are two parts where I want it to stay that color. 
Um, and so let's start with that one. I'm gonna use my medium sized brush um, because it's right about the size of that tail now. I think it'll be good to do that with. And I'm gonna come right up to here and stop. Um, and this is with, um, I believe it's color one on your list. Would you grab my little, we were not prepared today. <laughs> we're at the shop, so I've got everything. I just didn't have everything right next to me. All right. I could not find it. Oh, it's the teal the color, so. Yes, it is the teal one. blue. Should be right here. Yes, I labeled it number three, Coastal Waters. Okay, Sunshine was number one, and teal is um, number three. So we're using this lighter color. Brace your wrist and just carefully paint this tail. Now, if you want to move to your smaller brush to get the details done, you can do that too. I may do the edges a little later with my detail brush. But I just thought I'd get the basics of it done here and just come right up to about here and stop. Now again, I can use the edge of my brush if I move very carefully. But I think it's feeling kind of clunky now. So I'm going to use this smaller brush just to get in here and do some details. I want to get right up to the edge, smooth that out. And yep, I'm getting yellow all over my elbow, but on my wrist, but that's okay. Part of that's because I painted a pineapple earlier. And remember to smooth your paint out. It can be um, tempting to put too much paint on there you want to keep it nice and smooth. That pointy end is really good for doing the tip of the tail. And see how nicely this color covers the pencil lines. I believe it's graphite. We use a, a graphite tracing paper. All right. And I have a nice teal kitty to cat tail. There we go. Oh, I see a little spot right there I didn't get. I hope everybody enjoyed this super sunshine today. Of course, you might be outside in it and then watching this on YouTube later <laughs> because it's so nice out there. Um, I am really looking forward to having some warm weather and no rain. All right, then I'm going to do just the lower part of his face. You see he's got the upper part, he's got the eyes. Don't paint that little line under his eyes either. You're going to go right down in this space, all right, on both sides. Now I'm just showing you where I'm painting. And I think this small brush is really good for getting into those details. And you notice I tend to paint sort of the, the main open spaces. Um, and then, and yours, my lines didn't quite come together there, but yours should, so there we go. Paint under his nose. All right, and then up this side of this nose. All right, and I'm feeling it's a little awkward to get up here, so I think I'm gonna turn this way. For me, you all turn whichever way works for you 
and then you can bring that tiny point of the brush right up there and just get up into the corner of his eyes. Oh, I got a little too much paint on right there. If you ever do, just wipe your brush off. And you can see I went right up over that line a little bit. That's okay. We're going to use a slightly darker blue above there so it'll cover it up nicely. And this does cover up your um, uh, whiskers just a little bit, but I think you can still see where they went. You can obviously see where they go over into the uh, yellow, so it'll be pretty easy for you to go back there later and um, figure out where those um, whiskers go. And we do those whiskers with uh, the marker, which makes it super easy um, to control. I find it harder to do tiny little lines like that with a, with a detail brush. All right then, this is where we're going to switch over to our, um, our darker blue, and that is number four. Uh, no, that is number two. We're going backwards this time. We're going to go backwards and start with color number um, two, which is um, usually called true blue. And we're going to paint the top part here and down into his nose. So all this up here. I don't know if these cats look familiar to you at all. There is a designer called Laurel Birch, and she does tote bags and purses and blankets and things and she often does animals that are very geometric like this do you know what I mean by that where there's lots of uh, circles and triangles and she combines them together to make um, really interesting shapes and I just really liked her style so this is a cat sort of based on her style if you look up Laurel Birch, if you Google it, you'll see dozens and dozens of these. So far, and then flip back come on all right can you move because i can't or move something yes perfect because okay. <laughs> all i can see there was the canvas so i can't tell if we're frozen or not <laughs> yeah i don't know what's going on we put do not disturb on we went on airplane mode we did everything we could to try to keep the session from being interrupted and facebook is not having it so thanks for bearing with us it's good on yours, it's not good on mine. Oh, okay. But yours? Yeah, okay, I think we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> so, now I've got my little kitty cat there, um, and he's, he's um, this nice shade of deep dark blue. Now, we're gonna sort of ombre this cat, okay? So what we're gonna do, ignore the geometric shapes. Um, those are something we're going to freehand at the end, and you're going to get to choose to do them any way you want. You can make polka dots or zigzags or swirlies or triangles or anything like that. Um, but what we're going to work on is just these background colors, and we'll come back and get this sort of medium blue in the middle uh, a little bit later because we're going to mix that color for ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what I'm going to do is start painting down here, and I'm going to do it fairly quickly, and I'm going to do it until I'm about level with this spot here. So sort of the top of the tail. I'm going to bring my darkest blue, my color number two, all the way down until I'm about even with that line, and then we're going to start blending some colors. And we want to work fairly quickly because we don't want our paint to dry before we start blending. Don't worry if it does. Um, we'll always we've got ways of fixing that. So just start out here 
I'm going to use that trick where I make the brush go right up to the edge. And I'm losing my whiskers here. It's harder to see them now, but that's okay. We kind of know where they go. It must be getting windy outside because I can hear the roof creaking. You all can't hear it. All right, and then I'm going to come across right about here. I'm going to avoid his tongue because we're going to do that tongue later. I'm going to switch here real quick, guys, and go to my smaller brush because I'm just finding it too hard to get into that detail with the big brush. And it's getting awkward. <laughs> I need to turn. Sorry about that. We'll just bring this color right down here. All right. Now, we're going to work pretty quickly. And we'll bring just a little dot of this blue on the inside here. And what we want to do is um, we're going to use like the lids of one of your little plastic cups or if you've got a plastic plate, something like that. Um, but what we're going to do is quickly take a scoop of the blue and then I'll wipe my brush off a little bit because I don't want to get my blue, other blue super dirty. And a, a scoop of that lighter blue, mush it in there until you get a little bit lighter color. All right. And it's up to you how light you want it to be. I think I got mine a little too light, so I'm going to add a little blue back in. Mix it around. Don't spread it out too far. And then we're going to come in, and you may have too much, um, when you're using your brush for mixing, you'll probably get too much paint on your brush. So wipe it off, and then we're just going to start adding this little bit lighter blue right in here. And I've got, still got a little too much paint on my brush. All right, and then while I'm still wet here, I'm gonna kind of work it up into the darker blue, just lightly brushing. You don't want a ton of paint on your brush, you just wanna smooth it out. All right, and just work it up in there so it gives you a nice little ombre look to it. And we'll do that same thing. I'm gonna have to flip it over, guys, because I can't paint that far side like that. And there's, I'm always tempted to hurry at this step, but you don't wanna to hurry too much or you just get sloppy. All right, we're gonna bring it up gently, just lightly brush. You don't want a ton of paint on your brush. You're just kind of blending it in. And then we'll get in here too. And we may need to switch to our smaller brush. And don't worry too much about the edges. We can kind of go back a little later and smooth out our edges. But we just want to get our colors blended in. Every now and then I think the camera is upside down, but it's the camera oh, upside down. Miss Lori likes to upside down. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna paint down a little bit further with this sort of middle blue that we just did. All right. And I think, like I said, sometimes your edges get a little rough. You can come back with your small brush and just touch it up. There we go. All right, so I've brought that lighter blue down um, a little bit farther, and so I would like to go even lighter. So I'm gonna wash out my brush, my medium-sized brush, and I'm gonna come up here and grab some more of that blue, that really light Coastal Waters blue, the number three blue, and let's lighten this up even more. And you can kind of look, 
let's see, put a dab right there. Oh, I think I need to go even a little bit lighter. Yes. And it's up to you how light you want it to go. But again, remember, once you've mixed, your brush is probably way too full of paint. So I have just wiped mine off a little bit. And I'm going to come back in here and fill in the rest of this space. And see, I want it to be have enough contrast so that that tail still shows up nicely. I didn't want to get it too, too light. And then take a little paint off my brush and just gently sort of blend it up in there. He's got a nice sort of smooth look to him. All right, and I better flip over again so I can reach this other side. Um, Melissa, am I still lined up there? Yep. Okay, good. Um, now I'm going to go down with this color blue. First I'm going to put a little bit on here and then just... Um, blend it up into my darker blue. If you get too much paint on your brush, just brush it off. We'll go straighten up our line a little bit. And I'm not going to go with this lighter color. I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom of the toes. I'm going to kind of stop where those little lines are on the toes. See that? Um, because I do want to bring that last light color of blue into the tippy toes. All right. Then I'm going to dry off my brush. And we're going to go back into paint number three and just go straight into it, okay? Up, oh, you know what? I did that with my big, my medium brush, and that's just going to be too big. So, little tiny brush into my color number three. And let's just put a little paint on his toes. just blend it, dry off your brush, and just blend it up into that darker blue. So he's kind of nice and uh, ombre there. Now I see a couple of spots that I think I need to touch up. And you can do that too. Just, you know, use your little fine line. Um, see if you've got a spot where you just got a little too much of one color or another. And remember, you can always stop and blow dry if you need to. Um, my darker blue got kind of clumpy in this spot, so I'm going to smooth that out. You can always go back, fix a line where you might have gotten out of control there. All right. Now you notice we've got a couple of spots we didn't uh, do anything with. So I'm going to go back into that color we mixed. And I'm going to use that with my little brush. And do his tongue right there. All right. That, mine got a little too light, I think. So I'm going to mix a little of that dark blue back into it just so that his tongue shows up a little better. I let that get too light. There we go. And then we're going to use that color again um, to do this, this sort of 
stripe under his eyes. Take your time, brace your wrist, go nice and slowly. Melissa, I need apple green. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Look at our cat. I really like that. Did you name your cat? I have not named my cat. I, I can't name it what my cat's name was when he was little because it was Inky, and I don't think Inky is a good name for a blue cat. Oh, no. I mean, you can have blue ink. <laughs> That's true. Fun fact about Melissa, when she was very tiny, she had a toy cat whose name was Blue Cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, blue cat was a little plastic blue cat. He didn't look quite like this, but he was really cute. All right, now um, our next, um, the next thing we can do is add these designs on our cat. Okay, we're gonna go kind of geometric. Um, I did um, dots by dipping my paint um, into my <coughs> wrong end of my paintbrush into a paint into the paint and instead of just tapping it that made a small paint dot so I went in a circle like that to make a bigger paint dot um, I did this just by moving my brush up and down up and down up and down if you have a pencil and you want to mark these ahead of time you're welcome to do that um, I made triangles on that one um, this one you can't see it but um, I can see that I did uh, I used a pencil to mark out um, the triangles and the swirls before I painted them. You're welcome to do that. Um, you could also do these designs with your black marker if you wanted that, if you didn't want them to be colored. Um, and I did this um, also the zigzag with the tip of my fine point um, paintbrush. Now here's the thing. You'll notice that if I painted with the color that I did like his tongue and down here if I painted with that right here it's not going to show up so what I tried to do was use colors that were sort of opposite so where I where I was getting down into the lighter colors I used my plain darkest blue and drew with that when I got up here where it was lighter I used the lighter color paint so the coastal waters and then I used some of the colors that I mixed right in the middle and I kind of experimented with it to see um, because everybody's colors will be blended slightly differently and so I experimented a little bit with mine to see which color would show up best on which part of the cat. So I did now I did also did not take my design on up into his shoulder um, but you could you could do another line here and another line here and another line here if you wanted to. So I think I'm going to start for me with a row of dots across here, and I think I'm gonna use my lightest blue to do that. Um, you could also, um, you could use yellow or red if you wanted to. You could get into some of the other colors um, that you have in your paint kit there. So I'm gonna start with um, the blue, and I'm just gonna go straight across, and I'm gonna make dots like that. Now I may run out of paint, and I have to go back and get a little more. There you Which go. color? Oh, 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 you meant on your brush? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm ready. Yeah, I don't know how I could film the. It was tough the one time I didn't have Melissa because. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even. When know. I forget things, she can race around and get them for me. Melissa officially graduated from college last Saturday. So Ooh. you are now being assisted in this painting by a true college graduate. All right, so that was the color I chose for that one. Um, now I'm gonna go to one of the colors I mixed. Um, and I think I'm gonna do sort of a zigzag pattern now. So zigzag, just go up and down and up and down. And you see that still shows up pretty well because it's a different enough color from what I was using before. Um, you could also make some little um, triangles if you wanted. Um, maybe I'll try 
back into this light color. Maybe I'll alternate colors. So I can draw a triangle here like that and then just fill it in. All right, I'm getting farther and farther over here where it's hard to control. Again, you guys turn your palette, your uh, canvases when you need to. You can tell it's getting a little harder for me to paint over this direction because I can't brace my wrist way over there. Woo! All right. Now I'm going to switch to a darker color, I think, because I'm getting into the lighter color. So I'm going to go straight into that color number two, and I'm going to do... Um, I like to do swirls by starting in the center and drawing a circle and then just getting bigger and bigger and bigger like that. And that darker color really shows up nicely there, doesn't it? And you could have all your circles go in the same direction, your swirls go in the same direction, or you could turn them around and have some go one direction and one go another. Whoop! Got a little out of control there. Try not to have too much paint on your brush when you're doing that. Um, or you'll get, like I just got there, just kind of a blob. You could pretend that your swirl, you know, kind of got hidden behind his tail there. I got a little uneven there. All right, now I'm gonna go back and do my dots again, I think. And we are still, uh, let's see, maybe that medium color that I used, sort of in one of the colors in between. Mm, no, that does not show up on there. I think we got way too, uh, it got down too light. So I'll go back to the blue. And you all just keep doing your design however you like. I hope some of you all will share your pictures with me. I know several of you do when you get done. And you could do another line. Uh, you could come down here and do another zigzag. Like that. And what do you think? Do you like this? I like it. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> when Melissa was little and her sister wanted a dog, she was determined that we should really, really, really have a cat instead. Just because my default state was defiance, not because I actually liked cats. Right. <laughs> uh, but we didn't get a cat and... She ended up loving having a dog. So. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to paint his eyes with that apple green. Apple is color number four. It's the only green you've got on your palette. And just paint right over that center circle because you'll still be able to see it. And that's just the pupil in his eye. So you, can, you don't have to paint around it. But now we gave our cat a pretty green eye. And then um, you can either use the wrong end of your brush with some black paint, or you could use the marker after this dries and just give him a nice little pupil right there in the center of his eye. And there we go. How's everybody doing? Are you enjoying these different shapes? We have a very long delay, so. Oh. <laughs> we haven't even put pupils on here yet. Okay. <laughs> but I'll let you know if anyone says anything. I'm going to pause for a minute, let you guys catch up. <sighs> now, if you want to, I'm noticing things like I'm seeing some brush strokes on the top part here. So um, afterwards, I might go back and smooth those out with another coat of blue paint. 
Um, that's up to you. You're welcome to do that or not. Whatever makes you happy. But your, um, your last project here is going to be clean off your big brush and we're going to paint this rug. And that'll be color red, which is number five. And we'll just give this a nice good coat of red. Again, I'm not painting right up to the edge. I'll come back and do that with a smaller detail brush later. Now red paint is one of those that shows a lot of brush strokes. So you want to smooth it out all the way across. Whoop, I went over his toe. Uh-oh. Well, if you still have Q-tips, <laughs> I did go get more today, but you can just swipe that off with either the corner of a wet paper towel or with a Q-tip. Now I've gotten lots and lots of um, red paint on there and I'm ready to get down to the detail work. So I'm switching to my smaller brush after I clean up that little mess I made there. Make sure your smaller brush is nice and dry and start working into your details. I think I'm going to turn just so I can get a better angle on all of that. All right, use that tiny, tiny point to get right up between his little feet there. And remember, don't use too much paint. You can always go back and layer on more paint. And if you need to stop and blow dry. Woo! I got a little too much red on his toes. There we go. All right, and then bring, use that tiny brush, brace your wrist, and you can just paint along that curve. It's tempting to go fast, but you really want to go nice and slow. I find the slower I go, the less often I get paint where I don't want it. And then be thinking about this red rug kind of boring right now, isn't he? Um, the thing you can do with this red rug is add a pattern to it. And that pattern could be similar to what we did on the cat. You could um, add a little white to your red, or you could do a pattern in blue or in yellow. Now I've uh, gotten that all smoothed out, all uh, colored up. I'm going to take my brush and just smooth it out a little bit, smooth out some of my brush strokes. I was also getting my wrist on there, so I made some blobs in the paint, so just smooth it out. There we go. Okay. So we are mostly done. Um, but this is where we get to go and add our own little personal touches to it. All right. With my rug, I wanted it to look like a like a one of those woven rugs. So I did kind of um, circles following the line of the rug with my black marker. Now you will want to wait until everything's dry um, before you do that. Or you could add similar designs to this to your rug. Um, you could 
Ooh, you know what you could do? You could add tassels to your rug. Um, and the way you might do that, so you might put, oh, let's say we were gonna do like green tassels on our rug. You might put a dot. Ooh, I'm moving out of the camera. Put a dot right here. Maybe add a couple of dots, like right that. And then you could take the tip of your fine brush and just draw a little, little tassels like that. So you could add that to the edge of your brush if you wanted. Um, I know you guys, you get super creative, so I'm sure you'll come up with something. Um, now I do wanna show you where we're gonna do the black lines. And so I, I really apologize, but I am gonna need to very quickly blow dry this or my black marker is not gonna write at all. I will be back in 30 seconds. See if you can count how many handprints are on the wall behind uh, the easel <laughs> now that the image is removed. Now, even though you may have dried it, and I dried mine, um, remember that polka dots take a really, really long time to dry. So try not to smudge your hand wherever you've got a polka dot. And I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps where we're gonna outline things. Um, you can kind of see, um, we, we outlined his whole face with the black marker, and we put his whiskers on, and we outlined the tail, and we added details to the little toes. Now, I did not outline his whole body, but you could certainly do that. If you've not used your marker before, remember, um, when you open it, wow, this is a brand new one that I picked up today. See, the tip is white, so I've got to wake him up, and that means by pressing down on a paper towel, pushing the tip in. Remember, we never push the tip in when we're on the canvas, um, because that will bleed on our canvas. Um, now mine's nice smoking up so I can start adding some little details. So this is right where his little face goes. And the good thing about these markers at the end is if you've got any little spots that were uneven, it's a great way to touch it up. Said we weren't hurt. Hey, wait. Yep, it flipped All away. Right. Okay, we're good, we're good. back, I'm sorry. We just have a little to finish up. Okay, I think you're good. Okay. <laughs> Try moving. Yes, Sorry about that, guys. Um, speaking of my hair in the camera, who else feels like they really, really, really need a haircut? Now I'm gonna outline his nose. Go straight up those lines toward the eye. We had a Zoom call the other night with all of our staff. You've probably met some of them, like Mr. Colin and Miss Amy and uh, Miss Grace and Paige and Emma, and um, we all felt like we all had super shaggy hair, except for Miss Kelly, who is a hairdresser, and I bet she can cut her own hair. All right, I'm gonna outline his eyes here. Now again, you all, these markers are yours to use however you like, so if you wanna add details um, to this cat that we haven't added, you can do that. Um, again, watch out for your dots as you're making lines. I'm afraid I'm going to stick my hand in, but I'm going to run a line right along his body here. And you're welcome to wait and do this later when you feel like things have dried really well. Now, 
And then we're going to trace those little toes. There we go. And then um, outline his tail. I'll have no idea how hard that is. It is hard to use a marker up in the air like this. So even if you were using an easel, I'd say lay it down flat on the table. Oop, got a little off line there. And again, if your edge is smooth, it's a nice way that black marker can just kind of fix it up. Oh, I haven't finished the tail, have I? All right. Um, you could also outline your rug if you want to. Um, and, oh, we have not done our whiskers. Now, you can see where the whiskers come in over here. See, because the yellow um, is doesn't cover it up very well. So I can tell under my blue, too, that this whisker starts here and comes out like that. And I think it's easiest to do these whiskers on this side because then you can see... Oh, now I know where they go on the other side. So do the exact same thing on the other side. Oh, now he's really getting cute. All right, now, um, with mine, uh, with my, my sample, I kind of made lines on my rug like this. Kind of following that circular pattern. You could do that too if you wanted to. It probably connects right about there, doesn't it? Um, I also felt like this corner up here is really bare. So if you wanted to draw a picture frame, you could trace something that was rectangular or find something small and round and draw a clock. I thought it would be fun to add whatever it is you wanted to do up in that corner. So I think we are just about done now. It looks just like our sample, except where I've added a few little things. You guys keep painting, add detail to your rug, add a picture frame or a clock up in the corner. You could paint a little mess there in the corner of your rug. I'm sure you have paint left over from some of your previous ones. Uh, so if you wanted to keep adding things, you all do that. And don't forget to sign it and date it. You can even put quarantine painting on the back if you want. And next up, I'm going to show you, I think some of you have probably been waiting for this guy. This is next week's canvas painting. This is our sloth, and we'll be doing him next Thursday at 3 o'clock, and hopefully with a little less <laughs> pauses. So thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you next week.